All right, good morning. Welcome back to Twin Stick Garage. My name is Mark. I rebuild old semi trucks for fun in my spare time. And this is my latest project. It's a replica truck to the one used, one of the trucks used in the Smokey and the Bandit film. And I've been working pretty hard on this truck over the past few months. And from the outside looking in, you almost consider it finished, but there's a lot of little things that still need to be completed. So this morning, what I ended up doing was walking around, making a list of all the things that I still need to do. And one of the ones that's been bugging me the most is the bands around the air cleaners. These are not movie correct. The movie correct ones were chrome, and I want I really want to get those changed over because it's uh, it's something that's kind of eating away at me. So I've been hunting around. I've been, I looked to see if I could get new ones. Uh, I, I've been looking on eBay. I've been looking at auto wreckers, and I just can't seem to find the 13 inch diameter with the shallow mounts uh, anywhere. So. I was hunting around and there was a local auction recently where there was a big pallet of Kenworth truck parts and there was a um, bunch of miscellaneous parts and then there was two old air cans with the Canadian snorkels with chrome bands around them and I went, you know what, those look right. And shame on me, I should have probably went to the auction yard and actually took a closer look at them but I ended up putting a high bid on them, I won them and when I drove down there to pick them up, I realized that they're the wrong size. So. Let that be a lesson to you folks. Don't buy stuff on auctions without actually going to look at it. What an idiot! junk that I that was on the pallet. I mean, who wants an old brake pot? I mean, it's caged, but it's an old rusty pot. Why, why would they throw that on there? So that's definitely worthless. I got some, got some old red seat cushions from the fixed passenger jump seat. Uh, I don't know, some, some additional junk in there. I haven't even really gone through it. A steering column. This was interesting. So I got a couple visors. And then uh, looks like one that's brand new, it's never been taken out of the out of the bag, gray color. So yeah, not really uh, not really the most valuable components there. Maybe I could sell this steering column on eBay. But the air cans have the Canadian intakes on them, or at least that's what I call them. Where you've got this additional snorkel where it pulls warm air from around the engine, runs it through the air filter, and then shoves it into the uh, intake. So it's just got this additional cap on there, but it had the chrome air bands, or the chrome uh, bands that I was looking for. And I call these the shallow balance, where the, you've got these brackets that come out. I think this is the standard for the A model Kenworth, where it comes out from the truck and then the brackets bolt to that. So it's only about an inch away. Now I do have some 15 inch bands that I call the deeper mounts, and you can still get 13 inch bands that have this deeper mount, but it's got a different bracket that doesn't come out as far from the truck. So those aren't gonna work. So when I first got these home, I went, oh boy, they do look a little bigger than mine. Uh, but I had these 15 inch bands. So I put these around and they're bigger. And I went, okay, good. I guess these are 13 inch bands. But then looking at it a little closer, something just didn't seem right. So I took a piece of wire and wrapped it around where the band is. And then if I take this over to mine, it's the weirdest thing because they're about, I don't know, two or three inches too large. So it's, 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 I can't figure this one out. This maybe for these Canadian intakes, they made a special diameter band because mine are 13. When you close it, it's 13 inches across. These are 15 and they're too big. So it's almost like these are a 14 inch band. It's just pretty odd. So. I guess what I'll do is I'll just throw these on eBay or if anyone out there is interested in some Canadian intakes with odd 14 inch size bands, hit me up at twinstickgarage at gmail.com. Or if you've got 13 inch chrome bands and you're willing to part with them, please, uh, please reach out to me because I'm still looking for that. So that's a bit of a bummer. Sometimes uh, 
sometimes you win, sometimes you don't at auction. But I guess what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pivot away from, from the air cleaners and do something that, uh, that I know I can handle and should be pretty easy is to tackle this. So I had originally put on the, the red uh, emergency and supply lines, which is pretty typical on most trucks, but of course I was studying the movie and the movie did not have red and blue lines. They just had old school, plain Jane, just black lines. Kind of the same rubber hose that I'm using to run all my lines. So I still have some left on the reel. So what I'm gonna do is uh, flip those over, just put the ends on there and I'll just screw the glad hands in and then I got a, a spring set up and at least it'll be, it'll be movie correct and I'll be able to hook onto the trailer in the spring. So kick off with that and then see what else I can get up to today. closer to the movie truck and I'll just leave it zip tied up for now when I'm not hauling the trailer that way it won't slam into the back of the bunk and then I picked up a, a new power cord as well for the trailer but the nice thing is, is I've got the, the female port here so that just goes in and sticks into the trailer but when I'm not actually hauling the trailer, I can just take this out of here. I'm just bobtailing around waste and diesel, and I can leave it in the in the compartment underneath the bunk. Like so. Okay, what's next? Okay, a little public service announcement for all you guys out there with uh, old semi trucks or even old regular pickup trucks. You want to get yourself a nice, new, functional, fire extinguisher. It's pretty important. Uh, I always like to mount mine in the in the bunk on the driver's side. That way there's easy access. If you ever have an electrical fire in the cab or you spill something or get some kind of fire outside the truck, always a good idea to have one of these. It, what kind of what kind of set me off on making sure I have a fire extinguisher was actually when I bought the, the Peterbilt off of off of Sean. He was telling me he had two Peterbilts. I wanted to buy them both, but uh, the missus said you got to pick one. So obviously I picked the twin stick one. Anyway, I digress. Um, where I was going with that though, is he was telling me a story where he actually, one of his trucks, the, the other one that I didn't buy, the maroon one, it actually had an electrical fire and the driver at the time, there was no fire extinguisher in the truck. So the driver just had to get out of the truck and they had to wait till someone could come along and put the fire out. So it was a substantial amount of fire damage on that truck and they had to redo all of the electrical. So after I heard that story, I kind of went, you know what? It's, uh, it's probably money well spent to go and get yourself a $30 fire extinguisher and just mount it in the cab. And just make sure that, that you always got the pressure. It's uh, always fully charged and in the green zone. So you want to have that gauge turned towards yourself as you can see it. So it's a good idea on your pre-trip pre -trip to, uh, to double, just double check that. So, I'll just quickly screw that into the wood floor here and move on to the next thing. Okay, next up I wanted to get at these door sills. So I had mounted these in here. This is just angle aluminum that I painted black. And then of course, going in and out of the cab, putting in the interior and then putting in the seats, I just I scratched the hell out of them. So I had just painted them. So what I'm thinking I might do is powder coat them black instead might be a little more, a little hardier and won't get scratched so easily. So let's, let's try out that new oven of mine. Now I guess the question is going to be though is, will these actually fit inside the oven? Oh man, really? Damn. What's the point of having a baking oven if you can't even fit your parts in there? I wonder... I almost fit it in like this. Yeah, that might work. Yeah. Okay, that'll work. So what I'll do is I'll sand it down and then you almost, when you powder coat, you don't want to touch it. But 
Yeah, I don't know if I should be spraying the powder coat into the oven. I suppose it'd be okay. Just do it like that. Put the electrode on there and just fog in the, the black powder. Yeah, I think that'll work. Let's try that. So first up, I'll just sand it all smooth. Oh, I just realized something. I'm not going to be able to... Uh, well, it should still work. What I'm thinking is when I electrify this, it's going to make the whole stove. It's going to electrify the whole stove, but uh, we'll see if this works. Now, get a mask, because this stuff's not good to breathe. And you shouldn't put anything in your lungs except air. Okay. Now I wonder if I got enough black left over. Yeah, there's a little bit in there. Okay, I got the power cord going on there now, so that's good. Put some air pressure. Okay, that's why it's always a good idea to read the instructions. So it clearly states that you don't want to breathe this stuff, so I knew that. But it also states that you don't want to get the powder near an ignition source. So you don't want to spray into your oven like I just did. So I've actually blown out the oven and wiped it out. And we'll close that up. And I'll spray it again on the ground. Well, actually, I didn't nick it, so that'll be a good first coat. And we'll just set it in there. But yeah, that wasn't too smart. But at least we avoided an explosion, so that's cool. Okay, so we got her at 400 degrees. Toasty. Now I'll try and put this in without touching too much of it. Burning my hand. I wonder, maybe a pair of pliers? That might help. So the idea is, is to, uh, I want to clean that so I can see it, is you wait, you cook it for 10 minutes and it should start to get shiny and then you want to cook it for 10 minutes after that at 400 degrees. So not that exciting. So we'll leave that there and then I'll, I guess I'll start prepping the other side, sand that down. Now of course I've nicked that in a couple spots. So what I'll have to do is cook it, let it cool, spray it one more time, put it in there. So it'll be a few iterations to get them perfect, but uh, yeah. That should work. There, so it's getting nice and shiny. You can see the sheen there, so to let it final cure another 10 minutes from there, I ought to do it. Yeah, that didn't turn out too bad. And like I say, hopefully that powder coating is a little hardier than the paint that I had on there before. There, done. On to the next job. Uh, so an old timer told me a while back, he said, Mark, take this series parallel switch garbage and throw it away. Go buy yourself a 12 volt starter and you'll never regret it. And I really should have listened to him because I am regretting sticking with this series parallel switch. 
So what this does is it takes the 12 volts from the batteries and doubles it and sends 24 volts down to the starter. And I went, I had some trouble with the original one that was on this truck, so I went and bought a brand new one from Kenworth. I think it was about 250 bucks. And I, that was probably about, I don't know, 20 episodes ago, if you go back, uh, where I installed it. And even brand new out of the box, it had trouble. So I took some combination of old parts and new parts and got it working. And it actually gave me no issue until a couple weeks ago when I took this truck out with Mrs. Twin Sticks. When I pulled back, I backed it up in front of the shop and turned it off and then I washed the hood and did some other stuff. Then when I went to start it, just nothing. It didn't click this, it didn't click the solenoid. So I took this thing apart and I finally got it to where the plunger was moving, but it still wasn't sending any power down to the to the starter. So I probably should have videotaped it, but I actually had Mrs. Sticks there. She jumped in my Ford, hooked the chain on it, and we just pull started the Kenworth, fired right up, and then I backed it in. It's been sitting here ever since. So I kind of wanted to dig into this to see if it's if this was the issue or if it was the starter. And what I discovered when I took this apart is the little wires are broken. There's little copper wires down in there and you could just see the corrosion. So this thing wasn't working properly because it's, it's, there was a lot of arcing there on that little wheel. But the wires are broken and they're just little copper stumps. So that's gonna, I'm gonna have a hell of a time trying to solder that. So what I'm thinking is I'm just gonna have to bite the bullet. I'll go buy another new one from Kenworth. I'll redo these lines. Freshen this up and then hopefully it uh, hopefully we're able to start it again But I'm pretty sure that's the issue and not the starter which is good because this is cheaper than a starter, but Man, I hate electrical problems Okay, this next job is gonna make the purist happy So if you recall a bunch of episodes ago, I found this old movie correct three-way Eaton Fuller um, shifter shift knob and I had set it up to be like the old-school 13 speed where you have the low high range on this plunger so you go from fifth gear through neutral you go into high range and then you've got your your high range gears and then I just use the splitter button to split the, the gears in the high range just by going back and forth here so I would only use two of the ports and these ports here were empty and a lot of people were saying well you've got the movie correct three-way shifter why don't you use it Now that I've actually driven the truck, I realized that pulling this plunger is kind of a pain, especially since I got it too low because I cut those lines too short. So I got to kind of reach down, pull the shifter and then go into the high range. And I thought, you know what, now that I've tried it out and the low direct doesn't leak because I wasn't sure if, uh, if this old shifter, if the discs there were actually going to pass air, but they don't, they seem to work just fine. So I thought, you know what? Why don't I get rid of the, the plunger, I'll delete that, and I'll make this shifter work like it was supposed to in the good old days. So what I need to do that is, I actually went and got, the last time I was at Fleet Break there, I just got some, I guess they'd be female, female, 532nd connectors. So what I can do with that is extend the line from there up to the, where the shifter is, but then these these little brass deals will be sitting there along the shifter and it won't look very clean. So I do have enough line left over. So what I'm gonna try and do, is I'll take the plunger out and I'll lift the boot off of here and I'll put these connectors underneath the boot and then just run fresh line all the way up to these two inserts here. And then I can use some shop air and test to make sure that it's gonna go low range, high range, or direct, and then just split those, those top gears. I don't think it, uh, the transmission will know the difference. So as long as this direct uh, overdrive is not leaking, this should work just fine. So, all right, Mark, let's talk more work. Let's get at it. Okay, so I'm just kind of going backwards to go forwards here. So I put the two lines originally down here back on the, the, 
splitter or the hello high range plunger so that still works and then i've got i've got these guys here doing my split but i set it up to have the splits in this first position movement which we don't want so these lines are going to actually have to go here because that'll be your low high range and then these lines will go over here and hopefully these last two ports are to, for the uh for the splitter for the overdrive splitter so yeah um okay try that this is taking a few iterations okay there's the low range high range but why is it leaking so much Okay, so I think I got the combination right. Why is it passing air? I wonder, I wonder if it is buggered. can't get this guy anymore. It's just a plate. Is it missing a rubber o-ring in there? I wonder if that's all it is. Oh boy. Now I've really screwed it up. Oh, there it goes. It's, it leaks in low. That doesn't make any sense to me though because I was using low direct this first stage for my splitter and it wasn't leaking. So what changed? So that should work. There's only three holes there. There's two, one supply and then the two that it's going to send it down actuate that solenoid and then this last one here maybe i don't maybe you don't need the last one because it's putting air back in i don't know <laughs> oh. yeah i'm just i'm not sure this is possible so i've got two the, the reason is is because i've got two supplies whereas i think this shifter can only accommodate the the one supply in the one hole there but i don't know why i got air coming out of two lines. So it's almost like there's a supply for the high, low, high range, and there's a supply for the splitter. Whereas this guy is designed to only have one supply. So right now I can put supply and that, and that should, it's not, like a, it's not the big clunk. Maybe I got it wrong here. All right, so I decided to take a step back and try and figure out if there was a way to actually take one of these old style three-way shift knobs and make it work on the truck with, uh, with a modern style 13 speed. And what I discovered is it can be done. So the four ports here, it, um, basically you only need three of them. So the E stands for exhaust, so that's a, uh, that's kind of superfluous. That just blows off when you, when you flip the switch there. And if there's any extra air pressure in the line, it just blows off. So the exhaust is just a one way out. So you only need these three. So I got three letters R, F, and S. So S is supply. And that's part of the problem because I've got two supply lines, if you recall, right now coming up from the floor. So you just need one supply. F is for the splitter. And then uh, R is for the range. So those are the only three you need, but the problem is, is there's four lines, like I say, coming up. So there's two supplies. So after doing some research, what it is, is there's, there's a T-valve coming out of the, the slave and what you need to do, so it's, it's coming up the fourth green line 
is coming up into the shifter. So I need to delete that. So I just got to crawl into the truck, take that line off of there, and then just cap it off with an NPT plug. So that solves the problem to only have one supply line. But then the other challenge that I need is there, uh, is you got to make a change on the range cylinder. So this is basically the, the high-low range at the at, um, piston at the back of the transmission. And you've got to swap these two lines. I don't know how that works, but for whatever reason, if you put the low on the top and the high on the bottom, it, it, it flips it so the piston can actually work. And then I think what happens is when you turn to the, return to the low range, it just walks itself back. Whereas with this style of shifter, it's, it's giving positive pressure each way. So supposedly this works. So I think we can, uh, I think I can get this going here, but the biggest challenge is going to be now that I've got the floor in, this would have been a lot easier to sort out when I had the floor out, but because this is right up on the side of the transmission. So that's going to be a tough one to reach and then, uh, and then cap that off with a plug and then flip these two lines. And then I should be able to sort out with the three lines that are left and make this work. Okay. So, uh, I actually don't think it's going to be that bad. I can actually get at it. So if you look, here's the T. So this is where it's tapping in and getting its second supply line. So I'm just going to unscrew this, focus, unscrew this and put a plug in there. So that'll be easy. And then here, here's the range cylinder and there's your high and low. And it's cool that they're right beside each other. So I'm just going to give those, give those lines a flip. Shouldn't take me more than a few minutes and see if this works. So I ran some shop air from the line that I disconnected and I determined that it was this one here. So I will just mark that one out so I don't use it. And now we've just got three lines left and there's supply. So we're down to two. Okay, this shouldn't be too hard now. Home stretch if this works. Okay, supply goes there. Okay. And then range, I'll guess is that one. Oh no, range, probably this one, because I had this connected to the plunger. And then try that for split. All right, here we go. Ah? Nope. I think we got it backwards. Okay. I think we got range and split backwards. All right. That sounds right. So low range, go through all your gears, shift to high range, and then let's see if we split. That's it. Nailed it. Yeah. Okay. So the guy on the internet was right. That's how to take, that's how to go from a standard 13 speed, newer style shifter to an old chrome style shifter. So you just plug off that T and you flip your high and low on the range. So if you find one of these in a, in a junkyard, you can actually make your 13 speed old school. So cool. So with that, I think what I'm going to do is I'll just screw this back on here. I'll line it up and uh, I think I'm going to call that an episode. So hope you enjoyed watching. Uh, thanks again for following along on these builds. And like I always say, don't ever forget, if you got it, a trucker brought it. That so what happened? What do you mean? I mean, what happened? What do you mean what happened? That's the end. How can that be the end? What kind of an ending is that? Okay, one last fun job for the day. So this is something that I've been wanting to mount for a while now. A couple years ago, a friend of mine on Instagram goes by at uh, the Reverend, and uh, his name's Daniel, and he sent me this Kenworth plate, or a uh, throttle cover, and uh, a couple years ago when I first started doing this project, and he painted it up in the gold and black, like the Smokey and the Bandit colors. And uh, when he sent this to me, I was still just starting on this project. I was still working outside actually. So this is kind of a full circle. I've been waiting to mount this on the truck. Now, what this is, he pours them himself. They're, uh, it's a replica or a copy of the, of the original pedals 
Now, if you've seen me walk around in junkyards on the hunt, I've, uh, what I typically, if I see an old Kenworth, I'll go to the throttle pedal here, and there's usually a rubber boot over top of it, and if you peel that back, sometimes you get lucky and you find a pedal like this. So these are the old school ones with the crooked Kenworth emblem on there, and I think they're just so old school cool. Unfortunately, mine, being a little newer for the vintage, late 70s, 79 is this truck, it only had the flat plastic throttle pedal. So, so Daniel sent me this that I'm gonna mount on there. This one was actually given to me by uh, Single Drive, uh, Dallas, a friend of Peg's. He actually converted, he's got a really cool single drive um, Kenworth with an EV92 in it that he drag races. And he converted it over to an electronic throttle. So he took this pedal out of there. And I was gonna mount this in the truck, but of course if that was, uh, he sent that to me after Daniel sent me this one. And I just think that's, that's just too cool not to put on this truck. So what I was thinking to mount it on there to the plastic pedal was just using some, some two-sided tape. So I just picked up some Gorilla tape here at the Princess Auto. And I figure I'll just run two strips of this down the back. Now, what I might do is grab some brake clean just to make sure that's really clean. And I'm not trying to stick it to dirt. Something like this, maybe three strips of it. And then stick her on there. There. Something like that. Yeah, I like that a lot. Okay, so there you go. Like I say, hope you enjoyed the episode. Thanks for watching. And this is the real ending. See you next week.